It's time to introduce our motoring icons. The world's most famous hot hatch, the Mark I Volkswagen Golf GTI, a pioneering four-wheel drive coupe, the Audi Quattro, and a super saloon godfather, the Mercedes E55. These revolutionary vehicles are still hailed as the best of their breeds. But how do these legends really compare to modern machines? Well, today we're going to find out, because the car sitting on your driveway might just be quicker than the performance icon you've always dreamt of owning. We're going to pit each icon against a modern-day mainstream descendant. But it's not just about speed. We also want to see if the icons still have the old magic in how they make you feel. Quattro, quattro, grip me, grip me. First, the Golf GTR. This car's agile handling and brilliant power to weight ratio are still regarded as a high point in hot hatch history. But we want to see how a bog standard brand new Golf compares. So we're going to hold an auto test. Tiff, stop faffing around, man. Look, it's got to be right. Our fifth gear auto test will give us an insight into each car's combination of acceleration, braking and agility. The old Golf's lighter weight gives it more power per tonne, but the new Golf's tyres are 30mm wider, so should offer more grip. We'll let the Icon go first. Let's see what it's like in this beautiful little Mark 1 Golf. Three, two, one. Go. All right, we're off. Bit of wheel spin. Ooh. Oh, yeah, fighter, that was a gear. I think he missed a gear there. I'll tell you what, it feels quite sprightly and very light. See what the brakes are like. Go for the garage. Ah! Felt better, so reverse flick time now. Get some speed. Ready. <laughs> Although I do feel as if I'm being a bit rough with it. <laughs> it doesn't turn very well, but I think that is to do with the tyres on it. You can't really call these low profiles and they make the handling a bit lazy. Right, and then a handbrake to finish. And... Well, look, wind-down windows. Was there a missed gear at all on the way down? It's sort of... I, mean, I got a terrible cough. <laughs> Well, 43.0 sets the pace for the old icon. How did it feel? The one thing that sticks out is just how light it is. I've forgotten what light cars are like. This is half a tonne lighter than the other one. 850 kilos. It feels great. It feels great. I mean, it's a bit lazy and a bit sloppy, and but yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Get another car. Mind that gearbox. <laughs> The trademark inside rear wheel lift under heavy cornering is a result of the Golf GTI's soft front suspension. When compared to modern cars, it feels lazy and imprecise. Now to find out if a run-of-the-mill diesel-powered new Golf is faster. Place your bets. Right then, 43.0 to beat. To make it fair, I've attempted to turn all of the electronic toys off. Right. But I might struggle with a handbrake. I can't hear you very well. It's a lot of noise under your bonnet. Yeah, well, it's a diesel. It's oh, it's a diesel. Burn. Yeah. I might struggle with a handbrake. Are you ready? Because there isn't one. Are you ready? Hold on. Let me get my safety thing sorted. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> oh, it's good off the line. Wow, I tell you what, it's nippy. God, it's such a different car. Brakes are much, much sharper. Oh, Vita, she's a really fantastic J-turner. This is just a different kettle of fish. So much more grip and poise and agility. All oh, right, let's have another hand with getting him. Switch. Well, well you, you haven't parked properly. Yeah, but, look, I've got no handbrake. How much quicker do you think it was then? Two, two seconds. Nearly three. 40.1 really? seconds. What is that? For the little shopping diesel beats the icon. <laughs> It's a revelation. 
Despite the new Boggo Golf weighing around half a ton more, it beats the hot hatch Grandmaster, mostly thanks to all the torque of its super-efficient TVI engine and lower profile tyres. Its looks may lack the Mark 1's character, but it's three seconds faster, and that's all that matters. So it's 1-0 to the new kids on the block. It's time to crack on with round two of our Petrolhead Icon Track Day. We're finding out how the legends we lust after, like the Mark 1 Golf GTI, Audi Quattro and Mercedes E55 stack up against today's everyday cars. Do they still deserve their iconic status? We've already seen the mid-range diesel Golf of today beat the heroic Golf GTI of yesterday. And now we're stepping it up a gear. This is a Mercedes-Benz E55 AMG, the first AMG E-Class since Mercedes took over the tuning specialist, and still regarded as a serious performance machine thanks to its 354 brake horsepower V8. And this is what we all regard to be a smart but plain diesel E-Class, a car for salesmen in suits and not a car for petrol heads in race boots. So we're going to find out which one's best. The AMG is more powerful and marginally lighter, but is that enough to beat 14 years of technological development? One way to test all-round performance is with a combined acceleration and brake test. The car that gets from 0 to 70 miles an hour and back again in the shortest distance is the winner. I'll take the legend, Jason can have the newbie. Oh, it's him. He wants something. Yes, Jason? So we're yeah, having a drag race. You're going race. to lose, you're going to lose. Look, we're having a drag race to 17 back to zero, and you want the car that's got 150 horsepower more than me. And it's lighter. Well, obviously. Well, that's not fair, is it? Well, life isn't fair, Jason. It's time you understood that. <laughs> Just look at the lady with the flag. I might be close, actually. <laughs> Yes. Why don't you end up? We're going to conduct the race with both cars' traction control systems switched on. These systems limit wheel spin, but the E55 uses more rudimentary software, so the older car's power advantage may be negated. Over to you, Miss Starter. Oh, traction interrupted badly. Look at that. Much better start. He's coming back, the stinker. But now we're gaining, now we're gaining, now we're gaining, now we're gaining. <laughs> Tell you what. That's amazing, isn't it? Tell you what, that was close, because my traction control kicked in big time and you got ahead of me with your talky diesel. But then we were gaining on you. You're going faster early than me, hence you stop earlier. But your traction's a more responsive yeah. system. But it's very close, considering 150 horsepower, it's a lot, isn't it? Come on, let me have another go. Right, so here we go. Let's look at the starter lady on the flag. Oh. Again, the new car gets off the line quicker, and it's not just because of its more sophisticated traction control. Come away, come on, you beauty! The AMG's five-speed automatic isn't as responsive as the new car's seven-speed. But now we're gaining, now we're gaining, now we're gaining, now we're gaining. Once the transmission has spooled up, the old car crawls back in advantage and hits 70 miles an hour first. Ah, oh, the grunt. Yep, to 70. The new car has marginally better brakes, but it still can't stop in a short enough distance to take the overall victory. It was only about a car length, in it? It's close, isn't it? Traction interrupted. This stops quicker than that. Better brakes, better traction control. It's close, isn't it? Yeah. When you think of the difference in the cars and to have only a car length difference. Yeah. There's still no substitute for power. But we're genuinely shocked at how close a basic four-cylinder diesel, designed for economy, can come to matching a serious V8-powered super saloon, once considered to have epic performance. So, it's all square in our new versus old dogfight. Join us later, when the mighty motoring icon, the Audi Quattro, will take on its sensible second cousin. 
the Audi A5 Sportback Diesel. It's time for the grand finale of our Petrolhead Icon Track Day. We're on a mission to see how legendary motoring icons compare to ordinary modern machines. Although I do feel as if I'm being a bit rough with it. Do these classic performance cars still deserve their lofty status? Or have we reached a point where even bog-standard modern cars are both faster and more fun? <laughs> the iconic Mark 1 Golf GTI was trounced in an auto test by a new diesel Golf. Fantastic J-Turner. But the brawny E55 AMG clawed back a victory for the icons. I'll tell you what, that was close. Now we're going to test old-school reputation on the track. This is the Audi Quattro. The first coupe with permanent four-wheel drive, featuring a hairy-chested, 220-horsepower, five-cylinder turbocharged engine. It still makes rally fans go weak at the knees. But how does it compare to a bog-standard version of Audi's 21st-century coupe, the A5? Well, let's find out. The Quattro's story began in 1977, when an Audi engineer was so impressed by the advanced four-wheel drive system of a Volkswagen military truck that he transferred it into a prototype road car. By 1980, it had evolved to become the brand new Quattro. But 34 years have passed since the Quattro was born. So can this diesel front-wheel drive A5 get around the track quicker? We're going to pit them head-to-head -head over a two-lap race to find out. We reckon it's going to be very, very close. Right, so we've got a bit of a race between me and Tiff. What's going to go on? Oh, look at that four-wheel drive. He's off the line. We've got an extra 45 horsepower. I'm 250 kilograms lighter. Uh, this is one challenge the icon's not going to lose. I've left him behind already. I'm not so sure about the brakes. Oh, he's gone in a bit late then, actually. It rolls a lot. I can't believe how soft this is. It's so light. Yeah, yeah. And sideways. The old Quattro has some distinct advantages over the A5. As well as being lighter and more powerful, its four-wheel drive system can split torque front to rear, depending on where the grip is. Oh, I think we can dive on him here. Oh, you fighter! <laughs> just block him on the way out. Gosh, think. Where did he come from? Oh, he's got a bit more traction than me. <laughs> I'm working hard. And he's got the lead at the end of the lap. The Quattro has better balance and traction, but the A5 actually has more mid-corner grip. One lap to go. Is he catching? He is. He's catching a little bit round the quick. But we're gaining on him now. Gaining, 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 gaining. Flat. I'm not lifting. He's having a look. I'm going to defend him. <laughs> he's, he's blocking. I'll have to get on the outside. Oh. There's no way that's working, Mr Nidell. Not going to quite make the corner, Tiff. I have to block there. He's a bit quicker. <laughs> he's blocking like mad. So I've got the acceleration, but he's got the brakes. He's definitely got better traction off the corners. Oh. It's not so much that the A5 is keeping pace with the old car that's surprising, but the fact it does it so easily. The modern driving dynamics of the A5 mean that I'm hardly breaking a sweat. Meanwhile, Tiff is quite literally having to wrestle the Quattro around the track. Come on, old girl, we can't let the icon down, we can't let a diesel executive saloon beat us. <laughs> oh, I broke! I've got him too late! Uh, he's blocked too much this time, he's blocked too much this time, didn't he? <laughs> Quattro, Quattro, grip me, grip me, grip, accelerate! Now we've got a clear straight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the 
swan. Just the fifth path to go. He was quicker here, but how long as I'm in the lead? How long as we hit the straight first? There's no way he's going to beat this icon. No, he's gone. Amazing result, actually, because I remember that Quattro being a fire-breathing monster. And that's pretty close. Well done, Audi Quattro. You've saved the day for the icons. So the original Audi Quattro wins our race around the track, and the result gives a two-to-one victory to our iconic cars. The newbies may be safer, grippier, easy to drive and more agile, but the appeal of the classics lies in their charisma and the smile they put on your face. These will remain icons for some time to come.